Oxymoron. My Lord, that is a tremendous series. And I guess what it would be interesting to do, if we look at each of the three kind of main bits of work, if, if John, if you could tell a little bit about the storyline, and then Alex, if we could talk to you a little bit about the artwork, is that all right? Sure, of yeah, course. Yeah, it's actually it's fun seeing these uh, images, because I haven't flipped through Oxymoron forever. <laughs> yeah, it's got clipped down yeah. anyway. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, we're doing that whole thing. <laughs> Oh, again, I, remember, like, I was big with that cross hatching thing. And, yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> again, you know, I did pre warn you that I was going to gush during this conversation. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No. I loved I this book. I don't mind. <laughs> um, I absolutely love this book to the point where I think, again, like I say, I am a stalker. I think I did contact <laughs> John on Instagram because I needed more and I, I can't find more oxymoron. I don't think they did any. Anymore yeah, I think at one that. point there was four, talk yeah. about doing another anthology, but then it just never came to pass for whatever reason. Yeah. Did John tell me a little bit about Oxymoron? O Oxymoron's kind of like a um, funny story in terms of how it all came together and how it developed. I kind of had like a, not necessarily front row seat for but like maybe like the back seat of like the car, you know, watching it yeah. all develop, you know. Um, but... Um, Obviously, I've been with Comics Tribe. I've been working with Comics Tribe since is the earliest days. Yeah. And back in like twenty New York Comic Con twenty eleven, the first show that Comics Tribe did, I was there with my book, The Standard, which one of like Comics Tribe's launch titles. And another one of their launch titles was The Red Ten, which was this kind of like superhero murder mystery, a bit like Agatha Christie's, and then there were none. Yeah. Um, but with superheroes, like, for each yeah. issue, someone would get picked up one by one. And people, like, this book did massively well. The It was the first issue that was on the table that first year, and this was the big breakout book that everyone was gravitating towards and couldn't get enough of. And it was because of the cover character, and the cover character was Oxymoron, who was this kind of really distinct, white-suited, white mask, like, Joker-type, you know, villain. Um, people really loved that character. So they're all picking up this book, not even realising that he dies in the first issue. <laughs> like, he's, yeah, he's, he's not even a major character. He's just a plot device yeah. to kind of, like, set the stage for, like, you know, the heroes. Um, so, like, so I remember, like, Tyler going, oh, my God, what have I done? Like, I've created this massive <laughs> character, like, you know, <laughs> and I killed him off, like, you know. <laughs> and I was like, I flushed all this money down the toilet. Um, <laughs> and so he started talking about how he wanted to expand on the lore of, Oxymoron, like, and he wanted to do more of them. Obviously, he was still writing the Red Ten. It was a very big, yeah. ambitious series with ten issues. So he kind of came to me and said, "How hey, would you like to do a kind of prequel story, um, establishing like Oxymoron, like before like the superheroes were around, like you know how he came to be in this city, and like and his his pitch of it was like a Batman, like a Joker, a Batman story. I thought like, the Joker was like wrecking havoc without Batman around, essentially." Yeah. And when I came on board, and like, and he, he kind of talked to me about his ideas for it, about it being this kind of like contradiction obsessed serial killer who um, is like going after hypocrisy and double dealings and, you know, living oxymorons and like making the city into like a rather than this murky kind of like, you know, moral grey area it's in creating fine lines of, like, good and evil and separating it all, essentially setting the stage for the superheroes that would come in the future. Um, but um, so I kind of like, thought that was really interesting, but when I came on board, I started bringing all these different influences. My big twin sort of like reference points were one, Jalo. Like I, I was obsessed with Deep Red at the time, and I was like, yeah. you know, like you know, we're playing the soundtrack to that, all the Goblin themes while I was writing, and that's like kind of a <laughs> the kind of aesthetic touchstone in my head. Uh -huh. And then two is a movie called one of my one of like the best movies of that decade. I think it was a Korean film called I Saw the Devil. Um, which is like a kind of revenge film about this serial killer who, what his latest victim, unbeknownst to him, is like the wife of this kind of mad sort of secret service super right. agent who dedicates yeah. all his resources to like turning the tables in this killer. Um, and those, those were kind of like two big reference points that I kind of drew on. I thought, and I really wanted to create a story that was really nasty and disturbing. And in my head, I was yeah. thinking, and I was thinking, in my head, I hate, and I hated it then, I hate it now. I mean, can you remember that meme that used to be going around? There was a picture of Heath Ledger's Joker, and it was like, you know, childhood is loving Batman and thinking he's the hero. Adulthood is realising the Joker was right all along. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, and like, you know or, or, or this hero worship of Joker, and like, you know, like, or like, even worse now, you know, when they make, when they make movies of Joker's the star, yeah. I mean, God's sake. <laughs> You know, but um, like so, I wanted to take this idea of like, you know, he, he, you know, like, you think 
you know, the Joker's the hero, like, you know, you think he's cool. So I wanted to kind of create this story that starts off as a kind of flirtation with that, with this guy who's like, you know, oh, I'm a Joker type figure who's like, you know, a person who's right and wrongs and speaks for the people and yada, 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 but then turning that in his head and revealing how nasty and insidious yeah. something like that would actually be if it existed in the real world and how someone that is not the hero and is not your friend. Um, and then that's, really, then, that's really interesting, John, because I have to say, I, 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 this is one of those books that I couldn't put down. I, I just literally yeah. read the entire volume. Um, and I started off with that thinking, actually, do you know what it is? He's not... Yes, he's killing people, but he's killing the right people. A bit like that Punisher mentality, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then we get to scenes like this, where, yeah. um, where, <laughs> oh, yeah. where he's slaughtering I kids. so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is, this is not... And to have a paralysed watching, you know... Yeah, I think it says something. That, I think in the end of it, when I was released in single issues, after I wrote that, Tyler had to post like a preemptive yeah. apology. Is <laughs> after work, like, you know, in the same way. <laughs> About the thing you've just read. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I really recommend people go and pick this up because it is, it's an absolutely phenomenal yeah. Um, yeah. story. Mm. And Alex, the artwork, my lord. So so I... did you design the character costume or was he already designed? No, the, uh, yeah, Oxymoron was already set to go. Uh, he yeah. was, like we, uh, John was saying, he was in Red 10. Um, yeah. So And then uh, the, uh, oh God, I, I don't remember her name, our, our hero. John, yeah. what was her name? Give me a wee second, I'll tell you. I've got it, yeah. I'll find it. <laughs> oh, you got it right here. Uh, our hero, uh, but... um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, and she was also in the uh, uh, Oxymoron. They, we did an uh, anthology book before this one. So Red Ted came out, and then there was the Oxymoron anthology, which was, uh, like, we had a bunch of different writers, different artists doing, like, little these little short stories. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and that's, like, uh, John did one where I think... Uh, Mary Clark, Officer Mary Clark. So, Mary so, Clark. so she was already yeah, all right. So she was already designed from the anthology. And um, uh, John, do you remember who drew that one? I can't remember who drew it. It was I know Paul wrote it, Paul Hour. But yeah, I, I, got, who... uh, the, I, know, I got it somewhere around here. Uh, anyway, uh, um, so so those two were already designed, and everybody else was like, "All right, up to me." Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, that's it. So, no, I, I mean, <laughs> the, the the graphic imagery, the artwork on it is just phenomenal. And that that costume, you know, the red on the white that you oh, yeah. seem to spray everywhere looks just phenomenal. I've put an image up there of of, um, of our hero, Officer Clark, yeah. torturing Oxymoron near oh, the yeah. end there, was, popping was, his uh, nails John. off. And, yeah. I, I mean, you, you've got issues. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 the, the imagery is just phenomenal. I get that um, and I just love it. I absolutely love everything. But did you? In, is that the kind of work you enjoy doing, Alex? Is that the kind of do you enjoy oh, uh, the storytelling? Well, I, I, I'm a big horror fan, so I yeah. love doing horror stories. I mean, they're, they're just they're they're a blast. They're so much fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And um. Like. And and John and I have said this before. Like when we're doing the stuff, you know, it's like you know you can almost do anything to these guys, and it's yeah. and this goes this goes back to my starting animation where like the first thing. Basically, anybody that does an animation is draw somebody's head explode. Yeah, you know? and uh, <laughs> it's like I can do whatever I want with these guys. Yeah. And um, but yeah, so it, it, it's it's yeah. it's a blast to do, and it's kind of it's interesting, and it's kind of it's not like you know like people keep on saying, you know, you must be really dark and twisted, you know, for that and all that stuff. Yeah. But like you know, it's like like Alex says, it's not real people. Like I'm the kind of person that I can't watch someone getting blood taken. I have to turn my head. But, no, like yeah, we're yeah. Like but if I like said a movie something. as in a comic, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm flicking the pages here because there's some, I mean, again, this is another one for people to pick up. There's some tremendous scenes, but there's a couple of panels that you've done where um, there's a guy strapped to a, a wrecking ball. I think he's the chief oh, yeah. of police. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the crime boss that's attached yeah. to the wrecking ball. See, that, that was always the story. I, his office. That's right. That, that's, that scene I always talk about when... Um, uh, it's it's a, like a anecdote. Anybody brings up John's accent, uh, so like one of the like first times, or like maybe the second time, like uh, like at New York Comic Con, we were together like at an after party, and John was like, "Hi, <laughs> right, this is my idea for issue two for Oxymoron. It's gonna be great." All I heard was movie theater, 
and strapped to a wrecking ball. That's how I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. Right, whatever you say. <laughs> I'll read it. I'll, I'll read was... it later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Things are helpful to get acclimatized or acclimatized to this accent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's, yeah, now it's no big deal. <laughs> There's also been you, a lot of music, so. Yeah, yeah. Was. You get used to your own accents, don't you? So I quite often um, get comments on my YouTube videos about my Geordie accent, because I'm not too far from John. I'm, I'm down the road, really, from him. Um, but I just think it's it, it kind of disappears. Do you know what I mean? I don't hear <laughs> it myself, but. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, I always hate listening back to my own voice. <laughs> I love so that. yeah guys so that's oxymoron <laughs> um again a massive um recommendation to go out and pick that up for anybody watching because it's a superb storyline um left open-ended i would love to see this character back because it does end again spoilers for anybody watching it, it does end with a not even a hint you, you're basically saying that he's coming back because he's well, uh, yeah well the great the great thing is that like you know that that ending that leaves things open for us coming back then leads into the red 10 like you know right. so if you want more oxymoron <laughs> you can <laughs> find <Yeah>. us <laughs> I'll have to, i haven't picked that one up i'll have to have a look I'll have to oh, get oh, that funny one. thing is right um at one point um i, I remember sitting in a, in a, we were both at chicago at the time at c2e2 uh, me and Alex and we sat and had this conversation I was like okay if I was doing a second arc of Oxymoron here's what the story would be and I pitched this whole like storyline like you know to Alex and I think like in it like, I, I think we actually didn't have Oxymoron in it or it was, it was away yeah, he was, it was kind of like a you had it like Jaws like where yeah. it was all yeah. like you're yeah. hanging out with everybody else yeah. he's out and, there but you never yeah. see him yeah, and the whole right. idea is like what kind of world gets created like by Oxymoron's actions. It's like all these different factions have emerged in the wake of what Oxymoron did. And you have, and we had like, you know, the Punisher type figure in this yeah. world. And we had like, you know, and it was like really, you know, it was like kind of like kind of ambitious type stuff, you know. And then I think like, but then shortly afterwards, like, you know, we started to come up with the idea for Sync. And then we thought we'd rather do like Corona. Yeah. As, mu as much fun as it was to do Oxymoron, ultimately, like, it's Tyler's baby, like, it's Tyler James. Yeah. His creation, yeah, like right. you know, and we thought we wanted to kind of like you know, rather than as much as fun as to play with your pals' toys. Yeah.